in the world is Eric Almirola, plus Gene Haas is not leaving NASCAR. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. The biggest news of the week came out on Thursday when Gene Haas announced that he will retain one of the NASCAR Cup Series charters for 2025 and field a one-car NASCAR Cup Series team next year as well as a two-car NASCAR Xfinity Series team as well. Joe Custer will run the operation out of the current Stuart Haas Racing Shop. There is no mention of manufacturers, sponsors, or drivers in the press release uh, going forward. We'll have to wait and see what's going to happen with that. So Tony Stewart out, Gene Haas still staying just with one charter and he said that he still needed a place to promote and market Haas automation and Haas tooling so you can almost guarantee that we'll see plenty of the Haas automation and tooling paint schemes in 2025. So this is definitely an interesting development and one that I don't think a lot of us saw coming, especially on the cup side. The Joe Custer Xfinity Series rumor, that one has been around for a few weeks now as they tried to figure that out. Gene maintaining one of the cup uh, charters is interesting. Who's going to drive that car? I think Cole Custer might be a safe bet to it. He was linked pretty hard to front row motorsports, but if obviously your dad's running the team, the sponsor that you've always had it is running running a cup car, you have to think that maybe Cole is going to be that guy there. Maybe the Xfinity Series is a landing spot for Ryan Priest or Josh Berry, someone along those lines, because they're likely going to lose Riley Herbst as well at the end of the year to a Cup Series ride. Um, there is a guy over at the Wood Brothers that does bring sponsorship along if they are looking to try to offset some costs. But this is definitely an interesting development. I did hear a rumor on Wednesday night that the deal for Front Row Motorsport to buy the Stuart Haas Racing Shop had fallen apart, and now obviously this makes a lot of sense. And Gene holding on to one of the charters kind of upsets the charter market a little bit because there wasn't a clear buyer for that fourth charter yet. Was it going to be Legacy? Was it going to be RCR? What was going to necessarily happen to it? And now Legacy have heard some rumors about some things going on over there. That gets really interesting, but we'll have to wait for some more information on that one. RCR always felt like a long shot to buy a third charter, but obviously Noah would have fit in really well over there. So this does throw a bit of a wrench into the silly season plans and kind of how things looked like they were going to play out because now there could possibly be two open seats over at front row since it seemed like Cole was pretty linked to, to one of them. Um, then that's not to say that Cole still can't go over there and they find another driver over at um, over at Haas. But for now, a one-car Haas racing team, not really sure if, what number it's going to be. Heck, go back to the number 60 like you did and when you first came into the sport. That would be exciting. Run the Haas automation, um, Haas automation, Haas CNC paint scheme. That would be a fun time, or maybe they just hold on to one of the numbers that they already currently have. But it should be pretty interesting to see what manufacturer they align with and then who their drivers are that they go and pick out. I am interested, actually, to see who the manufacturer will be. Will they stick with Ford or will they move to somebody else? Uh, it's kind of a toss up right now uh, between that. Obviously, they're not going to be a tier one team, but they will be uh, the only second other what one car NASCAR Cup Series team on top of that chartered team at that. You have JTG Doherty Racing and then over here with with uh, Haas and maybe the two of them get together. Who knows? I haven't actually heard that rumor, but it would make business sense if they were to do it. So for Gene Haas, it makes a lot of sense for him to continue on. Obviously, sponsors use NASCAR as a marketing platform. He owns a gigantic company that would like to continue to promote itself, especially amongst motorsport enthusiasts. He landed a perfect spot for. So then we move on to the, I don't know, the biggest mystery of the week. And that is where in the world is Eric Almarola? That is a Carmen San Diego reference. I hope you get. I came in on the tail end of the Carmen San Diego thing growing up. I went on a date one time and the girl didn't get the reference. And I was like, we grew up at different time periods. I think I need to get out of this situation. But where is Eric Almarola? Do we need to send out a search party for him? Do we have to put him on milk cartons? Is he being held hostage right now? Is he off on a mission trip? Wrong religion? Probably, maybe, I think. Regardless, where is he? Well, let's kind of do a little bit of a backstory here. When it was announced that he was going to do Xfinity Series races in 2025, for this is 2024, he said that they was going to do 15 to 16 races. So as of now, he's done five. He hasn't been in the Xfinity Series car since Darlington in mid-May. He was supposed to be in the car the following week, May 25th, at Charlotte, was withdrawn from the car, replaced by Taylor Gray. And now he's subsequently not been back in the car. So if he was going to do 15 to 16 that obviously leaves him not that many races to knock out another 10 because we know William Swalch is going to get in that car at the end of the year. So, of course, the internet is flush with rumors that said, you know, maybe he lost his sponsorship, maybe he got into a fight, maybe he badmouthed the team, maybe he just decided to retire and call it quits like cold turkey, just bounced out and rode off into the sunset. So, I asked around, and it sounds like Eric Almarola will not be back in that Joe Gibbs Racing Xfinity Series car 
in 2025. He gets us, he gets us dropped at this point. Um, why he's not going to be back in the car, I think that's probably up to the team and to Eric Amarola if he ever wanted to talk about it. Um, because there's kind of conflicting, you know, information out there around exactly what occurred to result in the situation that they're currently in. So for now, Eric Amarola is seemingly will not be back in that car. Of course, they have announced sponsorship deals with him um, for that ride. Will he be at Watkins Glen in September with Go Bowling on it? Has that sponsorship fizzled out? Obviously, he gets us, um, has already been on the car uh, again with Ty Gibbs, so it's not like they ran out of money. Those Hobby Lobby people have deep pockets as they try to continue to morph themselves into Bed Bath & Beyond. So for Eric Amarola, I mean, he got that win that he wanted for Joe Gibbs Racing. He won it back earlier this year at Martinsville. Obviously, he's credited with that win at the Milwaukee Mile when Denny Hamlin hopped in the car and they pulled Eric halfway through. But he finally got a full NASCAR Xfinity Series win for Gibbs. And I mean, if that was the end of his Xfinity Series career, he went out with three straight top fives. So good for him and a win included in that. But it does not sound like Eric Amarola will return to that ride in 2024. So let me know in the comments what you think about the Gene Haas thing, what you think about the Eric Amarola situation. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.